This is Sherlock Holmes, starring Basil Rathbone and Michael Bruce. The makers of Bromo Quinine Cold Tablets bring you another adventure of Sherlock Holmes with Basil Rathbone and Sherlock Holmes at Michael Bruce as Dr. Watson. Friends, when you're the victim of a cold, remember this. Bromo Quinine Cold Tablets are made exclusively to help relieve the usual distress of cold. They're not a cure-all. They're made for one purpose and one purpose only. To help relieve the common miseries of a cold. The ache, the pain, the fever, and nasal stuffing. That's why they do such an effective job. Give yourself the advantages of specialized medication. When a cold attacks, take Bromo Quinine Cold Tablets as directed and only as directed. Now, here we are again in our habitual armchair in front of Dr. Watson's fireplace, waiting for the good doctor to uh, put down the evening paper. Oh, I beg your pardon, Mr. Manning. I didn't see you come in. I was reading about your latest American gang shooting. Yes, crime seems to be riding high, wide, and handsome in most of our big cities, I'm afraid. What a pity we haven't got Mr. Sherlock Holmes on the job. This is just what I was thinking. Of course, on the other hand, these gangs of racketeers have sprung up since he retired. Perhaps he wouldn't know how to handle it. Rubbish. I can remember just one case we handled back in 94. It was concerned with Giorgiano, the worst gang leader New York ever had. He didn't call it racketeering in those days, but it amounted to the same thing. Kidnapping, blackmailing, bombing, terrorizing innocent people. By during the course of that particular case, Giorgiano had one man taken for a ride, as you would you call it, sir. Uh, that sounds interesting. Why don't you tell us about it? Well, it's a bad story. Let me see. It was in November in the year 1894. Holmes and I were sitting in our rooms in Vegas. Well, I'd like to tell this story was about the head of a New York gang. Yes, so I did, Mr. Manning. So I did, just to interrupt. Even famous gangsters have been known to travel about from time to time. Well, as I was saying, Holmes and I were sitting in our rooms in Baker Street, and our housekeeper, Mrs. Hudson, must have been a friend of her. A landlady who kept lodgings in Great Ormond Street. Holmes invited her to sit down. The poor woman was obviously harassed and kept sucking away at the, at the fringe of her cape. Mrs. Hudson tells me that she's been having some difficulty with the lodger, Mrs. Uh, uh, Warren, Warren, oh, a minute. Uh, no, Mr. Holmes, you shouldn't call it difficulty I'm having. And then with the lodge that was easier to do for. It's just that I don't see him from one weekend to the other. Oh, come out. That's not anything I'm easy about. I bet you this is one on If I be your lodger, there would be many occasions when you wouldn't see me for weeks at a time. I work a good deal at night, you know, and do my sleeping by day. Oh, well, no doubt, Mr. Holmes. It's just a difference. He never goes out, not even at night. I've waited up to find out. I never see his face, not even when he pays his bill. Not the sign of him ever seen for the last three weeks. And how do you know he's still there? Like he's trying to get away from something? Oh, which frightens me, Mr. Holmes. I can't sleep for fright. Hmm. When did this lodger first come to you? Three weeks, that was why. He asked the terms and I think it's 50 shillings a week. If he does a fine sitting room and bedroom all complete night at the top of the house. Yes, yes, indeed. Go on. Well, Mr. Holmes, he says to me, I'll pay five pounds a week. I can have it on my own terms. He took a ten-pound note out of his pocket pen and then he gave it to me two weeks in advance. Then he says he's to be left entirely to himself and never for any excuse are we to disturb him. So he's at the rooms and hasn't been out since. Oh, yes, he is, sir. What? But I thought you said that he yes, had... just what it was, sir, that first night. He went out and returned very late. He was all in bed, but I heard him walking up the stairs. And his door shut and laughed. Oh, he kicked it locked. And I ain't seen him since. But his meals... How did he get his meal? Well, when he rings, I take a tray up and leave it on a chair outside his door. Then when he rings again, up I goes and takes the tray away empty. If he didn't want anything else, he rushes it on the slip of paper and keeps it on the tray. I see. Have you brought any of those slips of paper with you? Yes. Yes, Mr. Holmes. There's just been three. Good. Here they are. Uh-huh. Twenty days. Oh. Most interesting. Written with a broad, pointed, violet stick of pencil and printed. Oh, what do they say, Holmes? The messages are quite iconic, my dear Watson. So... <clears throat> Daily Gazette and Snap. They open up a very pleasing field of intelligent speculation. Suggestive, Watson. Very suggestive. Yeah, the gentleman says anything very unusual about those papers? No. That's printed. The gentleman doesn't wish Mrs. Warren to obtain a sample of his handwriting. And here, look, look. On this lid, our piece of soap, a corner has been torn away. It was evidently a mark, perhaps a substance. 
and might give us clues to the man's identity. Furthermore, the person is undoubtedly a foreigner. Oh, how do you deduce that? When he writes match, not matches. You must look the word up in the dictionary. This gave only the singular, of course. Now, Mrs. Warren, what's your lodger look like? When he came to take the room. Uh, young as he was, Mr. Holmes. Not over 30. Middle size, dark, and he had a beard. Spoke English? Yes, sir. He spoke English well enough. But he was an accent. He was a father. Uh -huh. What did I tell you, Watson? What did I tell you? Did he give his name? No, sir. He had any letters or callers? No, sir. Uh, where did he retire when you or the girl go in to do his in the morning? We don't go in, sir. Just for himself. Oh, I see. Yes, interesting. And uh, you say nothing has come out of that room? Absolutely nothing? Just two burnt matches and a cigarette end. They were on the tray this morning. You brought them with you? Oh, yes, I did, sir. Mrs. Hudson told me how you said nothing was too small to take Mrs. notice of. Mrs. Hudson was right. Yes, yes, sir, here you be. Hmm. These matches were used to light cigarettes. Silly, <laughs> How can you tell what the matches were used for? Quite obvious, my dear. It wasn't quite obvious. The shortness of the first end. At least half the matches consumed in lighting a pipe or a cigar. Hello, hello. Well, 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 well. This cigarette is certainly remarkable. Yes, this is Warren. The gentleman who is now living in your rooms is not the gentleman who engaged them. No, no, Holmes, you can't tell us that. You can reduce that from the cigarette well, up. Elementary, my dear Watson, elementary. That is the size of the thing. I believe you said the first gentleman had a beard, Mrs. Wallace. Yes, sir, a black beard it was, and a flowing moustache. Yes, yes. Now, take the cigarette. Yes. Only a clean-shaven man could have smoked down this far. Why, Watson, even that person you call a moustache, the start would have been sent. That's not very funny. Perhaps he used a holder. Impossible, my dear fellow. Notice the way that it's matted at the end. No, no, it's um, a different person entirely. How could he have got in? Well, he went out the first night, Mrs. Warren tells us. But did the same man return? I think not. I think it was the second chap who came back. The one for whom the first man took the room. Perhaps they both returned. Possibly in the pair of... There are two men in those rooms. Excellent, my dear Watson. Excellent. You're coming along. <laughs> now, tell me, Mrs. Warren... Uh, how much does the fellow eat? Would it be enough to Oh, no, sir. He eats so little, I often wonder if he can keep life and warm. Well, that's settled that. Oh? Well, oh, Mrs. Warren, there seems to be nothing more to be done for the moment. I hardly think the situation is dangerous, at least not for the present. Oh. But keep us informed of any further development. Oh, thank you, Mr. Holmes. I, I believe you in my mind already. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Not at all. Good day, gentlemen. Oh, good day. Good day, Mrs. Warren. Look here, Holmes. You're not going to go fucking about in this affair. Man is probably just a harmless extension of some sort. You never know, Watson. You never know. Whoever he is, he is living in terror. Huh? Terror of what, I wonder? Oh, rubbish. Science, who's going to foot the bill? What do you expect to get out of a case like this? Education? Education. The pursuit of knowledge, Watson, is my great hobby. Pursuit of knowledge of the foot. Curiosity, that's what it is. Plain, unadulterated curiosity. Oh, possibly, Watson, possibly. Education, pursuit of knowledge, curiosity. That's they all amount to the same thing. Yes, where are you going to look for your education in this case, if I may ask? In the Daily Gazette, my dear fellow, in the Daily Gazette. A newspaper is often a very storehouse of knowledge. I say, Holmes, every time I look at you, you have your nose buried in a copy of the Daily Gazette. Why the fungus for that uh, yellow rag? Yeah. The Daily Gazette is the paper Mrs. Warren's mysterious lodger asked for, remember? Well, what of it? What can you discover from a common newspaper? The answer is nothing. Nothing at all. Here it is four days since we heard of that mysterious gentleman, Mrs. Warren. What have you unearthed? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. No, you're wrong as usual, my dear Watson. I've unearthed We interrupt this program to bring you a special bulletin from the NBC newsroom in New York. President Roosevelt will address the joint session of Congress at noon tomorrow. We we'll return you now to the census of Sherlock Holmes. My chief enemy is to the hiding place of the mysterious lodger. How would you go about keeping in touch with him? Just learn now. Through the papers, my dear fellow, through the agony columns. And since Mrs. Warren's lodger received only one paper, the notices must appear in that. Okay. See now, but how can you tell which notice is the one we're after? By elimination, Watson. By elimination. Take this paper, for instance. The edition which appeared two days after the lodger took up his residence with Mrs. Warren. Hmm. The agony column, huh? Let's have a look. <laughs> Dear me. What a collection of groans, cries, and 
an utter nonsense. Oh, perhaps, my dear Watson, perhaps, but nevertheless, an invaluable hunting ground for the searchers after education. Well, well, go on. The first one reads, Surely Jimmy will not break his mother's heart. That's certain. Uh, listen to this. It's the lady who fainted in the Brixton yes, bus. disregard that. The lady doesn't interest me. Well, here's another. Every day, my heart lost. Oh, bleach, Watson. Unmitigated bleach. Go on, please. Well, well, well. Be patient. We'll find some means of communication. Meanwhile, watch this column. It's signed G. Sounds more plausible, eh? Are there any others? Yes. Three days later, we picked up the trail again. Here it is. Now, that one. And making successful arrangements. Patience and prudence. The trials will pass. Uh, G, G again. Yes, nothing for two weeks after that. Then comes something more definite. Yeah. The spark is clearing. If I find a chance to signal a member code. A1, B2, and so on. You will hear soon. Oh, what's for G? A joke. He's warming up. Oh, uh, see who that is, will you? What's that? Oh, that's right. Schweikart of the Schaefer and Schweikart Pharmacy at Carlton and Jeanette. 
Now, here's what happened the other day when a friend of mine visited this paper in Schweikart Pharmacy. Mr. Schweikart, you certainly have a fine modern drugstore. How long have you been serving this neighborhood? About 25 years. Well, sir, it's a long time. Say, what were those big buildings I just passed on the way out? Why, the famous Tulane and Loyola University. And we're proud to have some of the students among our best customers. And I suppose you have an occasional professor stopping in, too, huh? Yes, we do. College students and professors buy medicines just like anyone else. And that brings up a question I'd like to ask. What do most of your customers buy when they want to relieve the usual symptoms of colds? Bromo quinine cold tablets buy a big margin. We recommend them, and both Mr. Chape and I have used them to help relieve the common miseries of our own colds. That's just the way it happened, isn't it, Mr. Schweikart? Yes, that's right. It's been a pleasure to have you with us, Mr. Schweikart, and your statement bears out the results of a coast-to-coast survey conducted by one of America's leading research organizations and taken among over 2,000 American druggists just like yourself. It was found that more than 87%, that's about nine out of every ten druggists, recommend bromoquinine cold tablets as an effective aid in the relief of the usual cold symptoms. And in addition, the majority of these druggists said that bromoquinine cold tablets were their largest selling tablets made exclusively for the common distress of cold. Friends, when you have the usual symptoms of a cold, get the preparation your druggist probably recommends. Time-proven bromoquinine cold tablets can take only as directed. Bromo, B-R-O-M-O. Quinine, Q-U-I, N-I-N-E. Bromoquinine cold tablets. Okay. 
Bible. And a big pipe thunder. Well, I dashed. What is it, Holmes? What's happened? Something I did not foresee. I'll follow me downstairs quickly while I'm with my own excitement. Who was it? Who opened the door? And that I did not the substitution of lodgers, Watson, yes? What I did not foresee was that we should find a woman, a no ordinary woman, Watson. No, no, of course not. Dark, young, handsome, with a face set with terror. Terror? Do you think she saw us? I think she suspected our presence. Well, what, what do we do now? we well, put on our shoes. They're going to spend the next few minutes on the front doorstep. Why? Do you remember the message said that Jean would communicate with the lady at dusk today? You can keep an eye on the window opposite. Yes, but that's too almost dark now. Come along. Oh. Now he sent the message for me to call. It was I who sent the final message. 
Her husband disappeared out of the back window, if I read the signs correctly. But why run away? Oh, my husband, he did it to protect himself. To save me. No one could blame him. He could not arrest him for that. No. Now that your general is dead, we turn off him. We are free. Perhaps you'd like to tell us about it. I may be able to arrange matters for Scotland Yard. Well, Geno is my husband. And not a Luke. I am a media Luke. Oh, my husband and I, we live in New York. We are a half into my Geno's brother. He meets this no shadow. Look at the The monster. There is no judge in the world who would punish my husband because he killed me. Yes, I understand he had rather an unfavorite character. He was a king. He makes the young Italian men join in his society. And our brother was one of his men. He cannot break away. He must do the most terrible thing. And then one night he say no. He was shot. He was shot in the back. In the back? Quite a sportsman in her. Oh, quite what? After that, this young gentleman, he say my husband must join his gang. He began to make love to me. He was terrible. I was so afraid. So you ran away? Yes. One night we go on the boat for England. But we know your gentleman will follow us when he find out. My Jenna, he had me where I will be safe. He knows your Jenna will have come. And he waits for him outside. Tonight he arrives at last. But my Jenna is ready. He is prepared to kill him. Oh, he is a hero, my Jenna. Sounds I don't know what the British point of view will be, but I imagine that in New York, you say his husband will receive a, a pretty general vote of thanks. Oh, I think we can arrange the British point of view, Watson. Scotland Yard has been on the lookout for this, Giorgiano, since they heard he had landed. Mr. Lucas has just paid them a little bit of work, that's all. And now, Mr. Lucas, if you'll come with me, I believe we can arrange matters satisfactorily. Oh, gracias, Senor Gracias. I'm so happy. Well, it's been an interesting case, Holmes, but I still can't for the last minute see what you expect to get out of it. Education, Watson, a little more education. Always seeking knowledge at the old university. <laughs> Dr. Watson will be back to tell us about next week's story. Ladies and gentlemen, when colds are prevalent, act wisely. Don't neglect the cold, rest, and avoid exposure. Remember, if neglected, even a so-called light cold may lead to more serious illness. But if a cold attacks with its headache, pain, nasal distress, and fever, say bromoquinine cold tablet. They go right to work to help relieve the usual miseries of a cold. They specialize medication and they work internally. They bring prompt relief, grateful relief, and they are time proof. They're known and sold everywhere to help relieve the common discomforts of cold. Yes, you can take them with confidence. So when you have the usual symptoms of a cold, get busy and take bromo quinine cold tablets. Use only as directed, and be sure to get the real thing. Look for the letters LBQ on the tablet, and always ask for them by name. Bromo, B-R-O-M-O, quinine, Q-U-I-N-I-N-E, bromo quinine cold tablets. Now, Dr. Watson, what about next week? Well, next week, I think I'll tell you an adventure that took me on a wild goose chase halfway across the continent of Europe. A case which Holmes solved by opening a coffin. We have been listening to a Sherlock Holmes adventure adapted from Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's story, The Adventure of the Red Circle, with Basil Rathbone as Sherlock Holmes and Nigel Bruce as Dr. Watson. The dramatization was by Edith Miser, musical interludes composed and conducted by Luke Osloff. This program is presented from Hollywood each week at this time by the makers of Romo Quinine Soul Tablets. Prompt relief for cold distress. This is not managed. Christmas seals are the stamps that help fight tuberculosis. Your contribution to the health and strength of our nation. Buy your Christmas seals today. This is the Red Network of the National Broadcasting Company. <laughs> 